If you struggle cooking chicken, then you have landed on the right YouTube video. I'm happy you're here because dry chicken makes me sad, and I don't want it in the world. Neither does your grandma, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, or your husband, or your wife. This is an incredible method for cooking chicken thighs, my friend. Now let's go! Here I have some boneless skin-on chicken thighs. This is the preferred cut for this method, and you will see why in a little bit. We are essentially going to treat this a little bit like a duck breast in the way that we approach and cook it. Now you can season it however you want. I'm doing curry powder, and I'm just going to get that everywhere. This curry powder already has salt in it. So I'm not gonna add much extra salt. Oh, already smells so good. Both sides, just like so. Oh, and by the way, my friends, not affiliated with this company in any way, not making any money in any way, I just want you to not waste your money. Yeah, that's what it is. I used to buy all my spices in a supermarket. <laughs> uh, you know, like $3.99, $4.99, $5.99 for a little thing, or whatever you pay. It's expensive where I live in the mountains, especially near Aspen. Buy your spices in bulk, buy them online. I'll see if I can find a link to this Vindaloo curry powder. I love it, it's really good, really nice to have around, and so much cheaper than buying it in a store. Here are the pros of buying your spices online. You get more spice for your money, and the overall quality of the spice is much better. Also, you can find really cool spices that you would never find in a supermarket. Also, I finally found my spice storage situation. These little four ounce ball mason jars are so cool. Cap comes off really easily. You can shake them out really easily. And then what I did is I bought these stickers, right? Nice, clean looking stickers. I have to cut them a little bit with scissors here and here to have them fit on the jar, but no big deal. I'll see if I can drop a link for these because this sticker and spice situation with these little ball jars, I just think is a nice, neat fix for storing your spices if you want to do something extra. Extra. Good vibrato. Take a nice pan, the heavier the pan you have the better. For most of you, your best option is going to be cast iron. As far as affordability versus how it performs, I think cast iron is really the best for most people. I'm gonna use a steel pan, that'll work fine. I'm gonna bring this up to about medium heat to start. This is gonna be a lower kind of heat situation. We're even gonna probably turn it down a little bit. But for now, medium heat, let that heat up for about three, four minutes. Heat goes into the pan, then we add the oil, then we add the food, got it? In that order. Just a man filming a man filming a pan. <laughs> now we'll bring the pan up to medium heat and, and we'll let that heat up for three or four minutes. A big mistake I see, pro tip alert. Wee, wee, wee. A big mistake I see beginners make is they'll put the pan on the stove and they'll put the oil in at the same time that they turn on the heat. And so by the time the pan is hot, your oil is gonna be basically burning or starting to burn or being burnt. We first bring the heat into the pan, right? Pan is hot, radiantly hot, like the sun. Well, not like the sun, but you get it. Then we put the oil, then it only takes another 30 seconds or so before that oil is up to temp and then we start cooking. That's how it's done. There are exceptions, there are exceptions. Like duck breast is an exception. You would start that in a cold pan, but for most things, you follow that method and it will only do you a lot of good. I'm doing a touch of avocado oil here. I just love avocado oil. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that. I love it because it's all purpose. You can make salad dressings with it, marinades, and then everything up to high heat cooking and even deep frying. I know it's expensive. I buy it in bulk at Costco to make it more affordable and that serves me really well. It's also really good for your body. Okay, oil's been in for 30 seconds. Now we start cooking and I just turn the heat down to medium low, skin side down. You see what I just did? I'm, I'm calling myself out, that was a mistake. I laid it towards myself. I got a really terrible burn from doing that once. This is the way you wanna do it. Watch carefully, away, and then when you get to the end, then you can drop. What you don't wanna do, I see a lot of beginners, they'll go like that. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Lay it in, wait till you get to the end, then do that, like so. Make sure these are spread out just slightly. That'll do. The most important part about cooking chicken this way, my heat is just a touch over low. As you can see, right, it's just barely just a little flame in there. Having said that, my low might be your medium, right? Or like medium low. I just got this stove. Let me show you something real quick because the pressure is what, is what I'm trying to explain. The BTUs, British Thermal Units. Now I forget exactly what this one goes up to, but man, if you feel the, pre the heat coming off of this is just absolutely ridiculous, right? So you just have to monitor it. Look, mine is that, just a touch over low. 
You might have to do it a little higher or a little less if you have some crazy stove. My friends, my friends, so yesterday, if you're new here, yesterday we cooked a tomahawk ribeye in three pounds of foaming aromatic butter. And this is the leftover butter, which we're gonna use to baste these chickens at the very end a little bit. It's gonna be incredible. But the point is, as this butter cooled down, what I did was just whip it with this whisk. That way, you see all those little brown specks in there from the brown butter making process, which happened when we cooked the steak. I whipped it while it cooled down so all those little specks would be evenly distributed through the butter because they're like little packets of flavor, right? Oh my gosh, can you see this? It's just beautiful. Talk about flavor, right? Like this is just... Coming up here soon, I'm gonna do Yorkshire puddings as well as some ultra crispy roast potatoes, English style, using this butter. Now, if you haven't figured out what we are doing by now, I'll tell you. We're cooking this like 90% of the way through on the skin side, right? All skin side only, that's why we have the heat so low, kind of like a duck breast, like I said. Right now, we're probably about 20% of the way cooked, all coming from that skin side. And what we can do here is just take a little peek. Oh my gosh, already, right? So I'm just keeping that heat low. I might just rotate these a couple times to make sure they're just cooking evenly like so, but they're looking absolutely great. Okay, these have been going for 10 minutes now, low heat skin side, we're gonna add a little butter. There might be some observant souls who heard me say yesterday to always keep the meat moving, which I did say. That is something I do with large cuts of beef. This is a very, very different process, but I just wanted to clarify that because I don't want to be hypocritical on my channel. Now tilt that pan back and baste. Wait for that butter to foam, right? You see how it's foaming, just like we talked about yesterday? I didn't do it right away. I waited for the right time, which was now, and then we baste. Dear Lord, this looks so unbelievably good. Heat is so low right now, guys. I don't wanna, this is um, gonna be very dark because it's curry, right? And that's all right. You just need to maintain your heat and watch. Just watch it. If you're not hungry yet, I don't really know what to say. You're not human. Okay, that was a full 15 minutes. 15 minutes of cooking and now we flip. Now, one more minute of basting on the other side. And all I'm gonna do on this side is just a final one minute of basting like this, and that's it. So we just basically kiss the other side with a little heat, a little peck on the cheek, like your grandmother would give you, and it is done. Now we're just gonna rest for five minutes. Pour a little more of that basting juice, mostly just butter over if you like. I always like doing that when it rests. If anything, it's just entertaining for me, you know? All right, let's get into this, right? Wow. I mean, this technique is incredible. It's just, look at the juice. I mean, it is incredibly juicy and tender. Like, look at it, look at that. I mean, that is perfectly cooked. If I had to guess, I'd pull this around. <sighs> I wanna make a whole video on this because 165 maybe is all right for smaller cuts like this. Yeah, around 165, probably a little less. Let's give it a taste. I ever had in my life. You hear that glassy crunch on the skin? Holy smokes! You guys gotta try that technique with whatever seasoning you like. You gotta try that. That is unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. I'm gonna, oh my god, Fridge, you are <laughs> That is the best chicken ever! Ah! Ah! Gordon Ramsay just gained a new wrinkle on his forehead. That's how good this is. Until next time, you know I love you in a mouth!